Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear learners, I extend a very warm welcome to you all in this course on Sociology of Sanitation. Today is the sixth lecture in the series of ten lectures on Sociology of Sanitation. Today we will concentrate on discussing environment and sanitation. Our last discussion which was based on socialization and sanitation, it is also related to today's lecture because in socialization we learn how to behave, how to act, how to interact with others, how to be in the society that is socialization, it is a learning process. We learn in socialization through different agents available in the society and how we can socialize ourselves keeping in mind the environmental issue in society that was part of our discussion in yesterday's lecture. Our today's lecture is based on environment and sanitation. As you all know that it is clearly visible the moment we talk about environment and sanitation. When we stay anywhere, we always try our best to keep our surroundings clean. When we think that yes, my surroundings should remain clean, what does it mean? It clearly means that we want to stay safe because it is directly proportionate to our health and hygiene. It is not simply that if we make our environment clean, we may think that okay, it may or may not affect my life. Of course, it is not like that. When you are taking food, when any uh, remaining parts are there or when you are using any fruits or vegetable, number of flies are there, number of other things are there which you do not like. or you might have heard that well my friend is ill because of the bad environment or these are the things related to healthy hygiene, these are the things necessary for healthy sanitation. So it is up to us how to maintain our environment clean. Of course, number of individuals are involved in maintaining our sanitation and environment, but it is starts with one individual. If Every one of us will think that yes, I will do my best and if others will think in the same direction, of course he or she will also do their best. It means environment and sanitation are closely related and it is in our hand. We are not supposed to play the blame game that no, no, I am not responsible, they are responsible or it is because of their mistake or their mistake. If we keep on thinking that yes, it is my family. It is my society, it is my nation, it is my universe. Of course, I am supposed to make the environment very clean. And when we stay in the society, dear learners, as you know that we are discussing sociology of sanitation, in that we are discussing environment and sanitation. So, of course, our focus will be on social aspects of environment and sanitation. We are not going to discuss different scientific aspects related to environment and sanitation. So, in society we all are member of particular society, you belong to particular caste, you belong to particular group, you belong to particular religious group, you belong to particular region of the area. Every society, every society frames certain norms and patterns of lifestyle. You are supposed to take food in a particular way, you are having different rituals, you are having certain recreational activities. All these things are clearly related to sanitation and environment. You might have heard on certain occasions the uh, certain things are banned despite the fact that these things are related to necessity of our life. But our life is necessary and our health and hygiene is equally important. And when we all know that health, hygiene and environment these things are clearly related. 
of course, we are supposed to maintain our environment clean, so that we can stay in healthy sanitary situation. And it starts with home, just simple thing, just imagine when you maintain your household clean, when proper disposal system will be there, when certain wastage things are there in your family, you are supposed to dispose of in a proper way and of course, at a proper place. Do try to understand, not only you are supposed to dispose of, when you are disposing of, you are supposed to think that whether this particular position in the society is okay or not. We are not supposed to think that, okay, this is my domain, this is my boundary, let others be affected. Of course not, because if others will also start thinking in the same direction, what will happen to us? Because we all stay in the same area and it is not like that when we talk about environment, it is very bigger thing. It is not simply that related to particular room, related to particular locality, it affects number of surrounding areas also. So, dear learners, when we think of sanitation, when we maintain cleanliness in our area, do remember that our disposing system should be okay, nothing should remain which should be disposed of, one thing. Another thing is that when we build our building, when we stay anywhere, the sewage system which is in our domain, I am not talking about right now it is in the domain of the government, which is in the domain of the municipal corporation or panchayat institution, but I am talking about our own responsibility. We should take care of that, okay, proper drainage system is there or not, rain harvesting is possible for me or not. At the same time, whether there is proper arrangement of disposing of any material is there or not. Simple thing, thing is that, when we think that our area will remain okay or if every one of us will think that yes, where I stay, that area is very environment friendly, that area is very sanitation from sanitation angle, it is very okay. Then everyone will think the same that in the same direction and what will happen to this world, we will not be able to think about, well, this is pollution, this is like that. When we know that simple things, certain things we are supposed to be abide by rules and regulations. So, for example, you are having any vehicle, it is mandatory that you should get pollution free certificate. So, well, we get that pollution certificate, but for certain things, there is no that official order, there is no punishment or fine like using vehicle. So, no one is going to tell that yes, do that, do not do that, but when we stay in the society, as a member of the society, if we inculcate that conducive environment in the society, it is not only fruitful for our society, but it not only saves the lives of the people, it not only protects the environment, but it gives us satisfaction that yes, we are doing something for the betterment of our society. Before we discuss different aspects of environment and sanitation with a special reference to society, let us discuss something, what is environment sanitation? Let us move to discussing the concept of environment sanitation. When we say that environmental sanitation, World Health Organization that is WHO defines environmental sanitation as environmental sanitation is the control of all those factors in man's physical environment, which exercise or may exercise a deleterious effect on his physical development, health and survival, unquote. Environmental or hygiene includes all those activities aimed at improving or maintaining the standard of basic environmental condition affecting the well-being of people. And what are those things which includes all these? So, these conditions include the following, clean and safe water supply. As we just discussed that water supply should be clean and safe. When we say that clean and safe, there are two important things. First, 
clean means it should be usable, if it is drinking water, it should be proper to use, so that one can drink, because the number of bacteria and other things are spread through the water and bone diseases should not happen. So, when we talk about water, it should be clean, it should be hygienic. Safe means sometimes we have to be careful that when, part, if it is piped water, pipe is going on, nearby another pipe is going on. So, it should not merge, it sometimes it may burst into dangerous effect. So, when we say that clean and safe water supply, we are supposed to ensure that if water is supplied as it is my responsibility as an any officer or as a general man, we are supposed to ensure that it should be safe and clean water supply. Same way, the air should be clean and safe ambient air. Of course, we are staying here. So, if we are burning anything, anything which is dangerous, that burning the smoke of that fire or anything which is being burned, it should not be or we are using any old vehicle and we know that it is going to affect the air or we are doing anything as part of our day to day life, as part of our game, as part of any rituals or festival of my own society. We are supposed to think that it should not be, I am not supposed to, it is God's gift and who am I to disturb this creature. So, I should not disturb the particular areas air. Next is efficient and safe animal, human and industrial waste disposal. We just discussed in the initial stage that disposing of particular thing is most important. When we say that this efficient and safe animal disposal, dead animal should be disposed of in particular area, so that it should not harm the atmosphere. At the same time, human excreta or other things should be disposed of in a proper way. When we talk about industrial waste, of course, number of industrial wastes are there and when we say that industrial waste, waste, not only that which are there from, but in our home a number of other things are there, waste materials for example, particular mobile, laptop, parts of computer, which is no of no use today, it is outdated or it is not useful. Then when we are disposing of these things, we are supposed to be very careful that well, this particular thing should not disturb the environment in my area. Then protection of food from biological and chemical contaminants. Of course, we should not take any food which is not proper to eat or at the same time, we should not indulge ourselves in creating any problem, so that if we sell particular fruit or vegetable, it should not be like well any chemical or any pesticide should be there, because we know that it is going to affect others. When we say that it is going to affect the others, they all are part of us. And when we say that well, we all think in the same direction that well, my simple behavior or activities should not disturb others, that should be our prime motive. And of course, another is that adequate housing in clean and safe surroundings. When we build any building or when we prepare our house, it is our responsibility to prepare in such a way that first of all proper uh, area gap should remain there, certain area should be there for gardening or other things, certain green area should be there. At the same time, our surroundings should be safe. Again, I repeat that as for the pollution certificate, we keep on thinking that well, I am supposed to drive the vehicle and I should get the pollution certificate. Well, same is there when you pass any building, you will construct anything, there are certain government rules and regulations, then, but we are supposed to stick to those things or if you are in rural area where such municipal corporations or government rules are not there to, you are supposed, not supposed to get the approval from the government agencies, even then it is your own responsibility when you are preparing any building, you are supposed to maintain that yes, it should not disturb the environment, it should be in tune with proper sanitation and environment. Then let us move to certain things are already there in our society. We will discuss the theoretical part or what is defined the way it is mentioned, 
the environmental protection and of course that source is also mentioned there that when you say that it is there you will find that in the BK Nagala's book sociology of sanitation you in every area you belong to there are certain rules and regulations which are already there and that those things are in tune with the norms patterns of the society at the same time it is in tune with the environment friendly because as you all know that people were very close to environments earlier and nowadays we are reviving those culture that yes we so our behavior should be as per the norms and patterns of the society at the same time it should not go against the environmental sustainability in every society we are following certain rules and regulations need of the hour is that we should maintain that we should think that yes if it is possible in certain situation every rules and regulations or traditional uh, things are not possible but as much as it is possible you should do that you should and in that way it is not like that you are respecting your norms patterns culture of your society but you are respecting the environment you are protecting the environment you are making your contributions for environmental sustainability i am sharing here two photographs and these the plates are where foods are being served made of one is of the south india which is there in south india the banana leaf foods are being served you can easily understand that the it is how environmental friendly another side we are having one plate type material where foods are being served it is also prepared from banana tree the foods are being served in the mithila part of the bihar at a special occasion where they are served on that part on the and it is specially prepared from banana tea on that people sit and they uh, take the food so one thing is that environmental angle taking food by and you are sitting uh, there and you are taking food and when you are destroying it of course it is not like the plastic uh, plates and other things that it is not going to disturb the environment one way you are following the tradition another way you are protecting the life so in other areas also in almost every indian society every part there are certain rules and regulations you are supposed to understand you are supposed to maintain you are supposed to promote and when you are using such things you are not only protecting environment you are promoting the local people who are involved in making these products then we are having for the healthy environment in our society there are number of things the neem tree the peepal tree the banyan tree the bhargad tree these trees are already there and now it is not like that traditionally we have been listening that well these tree are the air purifier or good for the health and if we can protect the environment these uh, scientific benefits are already there what is so benefit in our society that culture is associated to tradition religion is associated to these trees and so that we are not only doing justice with the environment but we are following our own culture so how good it is that we are following our own culture also and at the same time we are promoting the plant and other things also same way there are number of rituals and occasion where we are not only following our rituals but again we are protecting in our environment also and in that way we gives message that yes we are environment friendly one picture is in the left side that is there it shows there is one uh, ritual called bat savitri in bat savitri this part of the occasion the women married women they worship uh, the banyan tree and in that particular way they not only do their rituals but they also protect the tree and give the message that yes we are closer to the trees another is related to chhat puja where we are worshiping and in that way not only we are worshiping the god shan and the river but in that way we are thinking that yes water is important protecting water is in, uh, important and this message we are giving another is the pin painting you all are aware with mithila painting this one is the gobar mithila painting it is prepared on the cordon 
Gower Mithila painting, if you go by the history of the Mithila painting, it was on the basis of on the just not like the today's material culture, just the purpose was not only recreation, but to protect the environment, to clean the surroundings, clean the house. So, keeping in mind, in Mithila painting, you will find the depiction of different animals, different trees and other things. So, this Gober Mithila painting is indicative of the fact that how are we closer to the nature and through this we can give message to others also that yes, you can use different forms of art, different forms of painting and through that you can also give message that yes, keeping in mind the environmental sustainability, we should work in that direction. Well, these are the different things that we are supposed to keep in mind, that we are already having number of things, different social norms, patterns, culture are already there in the society. So, when we say that we, our society is there through different religion, through different rituals, through different aspects, they are there to keep on telling us that yes, you are supposed to protect the environment. And you are all aware that uh, these days you might have heard on the special occasion of the Raksha Bandhan that people are tying Rakhi to the particular type of trees that yes, it means it is indicative of the fact that well, we will protect the particular tree. So, that Raksha Bandhan with the tree, it is indicative of the fact that yes, we will do that. So, whether the recent days and of course, these, these are the emerging trends in new era, it means today generation, they also have started realizing that yes, if we will attach our rituals, norms, patterns with the traditional thing, we can protect the environment in that particular way. Well, when we think that there are number of things in the society, you cannot think of any good thing without the challenge. So, of course, challenge is part of life. But we have to think that well, there are number of challenges in every good thing when you are studying, there are challenges when you are doing anything, challenges are already there. So, same way we cannot say that protecting environment or the uh, nexus between environment and sanitation is challenge free. Of course, challenges are there. So, let us discuss what are the challenges before environment and sanitation. So, we will discuss now the different challenges for environmental sanitation. First is that prevention of contamination of water in distribution system. Those who are there in rural areas or those who are not part of it, they are fortunate enough that they do not face such type of problem, but where there is water distribution system is there. That is big challenge for us and how can we get rid of this challenge that we have to plan in such a way, we should use the technology in such a way and we should devote ourselves that yes, by my simple mistake, what can happen or if we use that latest technology, we may learn good thing from other scientific ex, uh, uh, experiments and in that we can practice that. So, well, this is challenge that how to distribute the water system in a proper way but we can think in proper way, so that this problem can also be solved. Next is growing water scarcity and the potential for water reuse and conservation. Of course, water scarcity is still a problem and in near future, if the situation continues, it may create lots of problem. Very simple thing that you can do, first of all, even in childhood, you might have learned that when you see that well, any tap is running, water is wasting or you come to know that well, that uh, I should stop that uh, water. It means simple habit, if you inculcate that, then you can use that. At the same time, when you are using water, if you think that I can use this much water, for that you are not supposed to waste another uh, water, which may be useful for others. So, as, as part of your practice, wastage of water or wastage of food, it should not be part of your lifestyle. When you think that it is not 
I will not waste any water, any drop of water, even a single drop of water will not be wasted by me. And if you suggest your colleagues, friends and children, your family. So, first way is that you should protect the water. Another is that if there is any scarcity, you should manage how to handle. So, that if scarcity is there, others should not be victim of that. I should use minimal whether the food or water etcetera in that particular way you can solve this problem also. Another challenge is that implementing innovative low cost sanitation system. Of course, we all know that there are certain category of people who can afford anything, but there are others and we are supposed to think about these others also that yes, they are also part of our society, they are also entitled to lead a happy and healthy life. This environment is not related to me or it is not like that I belong to this environment. Everyone is equally part and parcel of this environment and sanitation. So, we should also think in the, that direction and if we are having that knowledge, that having that skills, we should do that innovative ideas, we should use that innovative ideas, we should do keep on researching, we should help with the knowledge of the local idea with the particular R and D section, so that they can also think. So, if we all will think in the same direction, not only for the betterment of those people who cannot afford, but minimal cost is useful or good for everyone. Those who can afford, they can use that many to another aspect also. So, we can think from on that direction the low cost sanitation system. In that particular way, when we are talking about low cost sanitation system. So, simply by giving uh, particular uh, alternative is different thing and thinking from low cost sanitation system is there that is also another thing. So, we should also think in the same direction. Then next is providing sustainable water supplies and sanitation for urban and semi urban areas. Of course, you might have heard that today water supply is not there or that day water supply is not there or sometimes it becomes part of news item that in that area water supply was disturbed. So, we are supposed to that those who are getting those who are in such areas sustainability should be there, regularity should be there, today they are getting, tomorrow they should also get that we are also supposed to ensure. Then reducing disparities within the regions in the country, of course, you might have heard that in that particular area, there is a scarcity of water in that particular area, there is not. So, we are supposed to maintain the balance, it should not be that in that area too much water is there, in another area too less water is there, in particular area drought is there, in another area flood is there during the same period. So, we are supposed to, we should try our best to maintain the balance if we can that in particular area drought is there, in another area flood is there, how to bridge the gap. So, that regional disparity in context of water should be minimized, this bridge should be gapped. In that particular context, we can use technology, we can use science, we can use the traditional method, whatever can we do, we are supposed to do. So, this is of course, another challenge that is supposed to be taken care of. Then sustainability of water and sanitation services, what happens that well water service should be continued at the same time when we talk about sanitation service, there should not be any gap. You might have uh, got the news that in particular area or in different areas the toilet facility is there, but in toilet fa that toilet that water supply is not there. You can easily understand what is the use of that toilet if in that toilet water supply is not there. So, there should not be any mismatch if we are doing particular thing, it is our responsibility to complete the task in a 100 percent way. So, these are the challenges of environmental sanitation and as part of reference as I have already written, this is taken from sociology of sanitation written by Richard Pius. Well, whenever there is any problem, of course, necessarily there are solutions. We cannot think of any problem which does not have any solution. It is not possible in the world. Simple thing is that you have to identify that yes, 
but we are habituated of identifying problems, we are habituated of ignoring the solution. Of course, not you should concentrate on solutions of the problem also. As part of the solution, a possible sustainable solution to the problems of in sanitation at the community level is ecological sanitation. Ecological sanitation is also known as ecosan or ecosan. In that particular way, you are supposed to know then what is ecological sanitation. Ecological sanitation describes a form of sanitation that usually involves the recycling of water and nutrients contained within human wastes back into the local environment. An ecological sanitation viewpoint sees human waste and hu waste water as an opportunity. We just discussed that it is up to us that how can we convert a problem into an opportunity. The same way in this echo sand uh, suggests you certain good things. When properly designed and operated, eco sand systems provide a hygienically safe, economical and closed loop system to convert human waste into nutrients to be returned to the soil and water to be returned to the land. Then if you talk about what is the crux of or what is the main aim of this eco sand, the main objective of this ecological sanitation are to reduce health risks related to sanitation contaminated water and waste to prevent the pollution of surface and groundwater and to reuse the nutrients or energy contained within wastes. The reference is taken from Ahmad Akram's sociology of sanitation. You can easily understand the main aim of uh, eco sand is of course to reduce all those problems associated to ecological aspects of or we can think from ecological angle and if we promote ecological sanitation, then we can solve a number of problems because it is best done, let us think and it is re in tune with our norms, patterns and culture. So, if we promote ecological sanitation, it is not only helpful for us, but it will not go against the norms, patterns, values of our society also. There are other alternatives also. We generally talk about principles of three R's that is reduce, reuse and recycle. Reduce, reuse and recycle and these and when we talk about the reduce of course, it is in our hand. When we talk about reuse to some extent it is also in our hand and recycle of course, sometimes it is not in our hand, but it depends upon how to continue with or not. When we think that yes, we have to do that, we have to control, we have to manage the environment and sanitation, of course, we can focus on reduce, reuse and recycle. Now, we will discuss one by one that how can we use these three R's as part of solving the situation of environment and sanitation. Let us discuss with first reduce consumption and wastes by reducing fancy items. Of course, when we use particular things, we may think that is it necessary because as it is said that nature can satisfy your needs, but nature cannot satisfy your greeds. Of course, we should think that whether I should purchase particular thing, is it necessary? Sometimes we think that okay, I can purchase, so I should purchase, but think from another angle, is it necessary? If I will not purchase it, what will happen? Then we list out 1, 2, 3, okay, no, it is necessary, I have to purchase it, then you should go for, but for the sake of purchasing, we should not. So, we should avoid purchasing in that particular things which are not necessary. So, we should reduce in that particular purchasing of fancy items. Then consumption of soft and hard drink, drinks, of course, it is not only harmful for our health, 
but it is going to pollute the environment also. So, if we reduce that type of drinks, then it is not only better for our health, but it directly we are protecting the environment also. Polythene bags, of course, number of times you might have noticed that well there are government instruction that now onwards polythene bags are banned. Of course, not only we are supposed to contribute to that particular rules and regulations, but at our own level, even if in my area that ban is not there, even in my locality I do not belong to urban area, so that uh, police and other things are not there, still then we should keep on thinking that whether this polythene bag is harmful or dangerous or not. In any way you cannot think of that this polythene bag is useful. For a moment you may think that well it is like fancy, it is portable, it is good, but think from that angle that whether just for these small things, how can you kill the environment, how can you disturb the environment, because ultimately you are staying in the same environment. So, if environment is bad, it is going to affect you also. Same next the frequency of use of personal and private vehicles. Of course, you may use in urban area the pool system. If you stay in the area in your society, five people they are staying and your destination is same, you all working in the same area, you may use the pool system for using the vehicle or if you think that in, in I staying in campus, if you can use, you can use the cycle, you can use bicycle to reach from your residence to the office um, building. So, you can minimize the use of private or personal vehicle or if you think that we 10 people are there, we should hire a mini bus or other vehicle for reaching there. In that particular way, it is not that simply you are saving your money but you are protecting the environment and you are contributing directly to the growth of the nation and you are supposed to maintain that good sanitation in that particular area. Another is use of electricity, of course, reduce, we should reduce the use of electricity, because sometimes you might have noticed that if that much light is there, whether if I am not concentrating on particular work to instead of two bulbs, one bulb is sufficient or the power or the voltage of that particular thing or using of electric items, number of items are there, where really I need that items, really I need that particular thing. You are supposed to think twice or thrice and do not think that if you are not using, simply you are minimizing the cost, but you are telling your young generation you are telling your subordinates, you are telling your younger brother and sister and children that well, we have to be very careful. It is not like that you are having money, you can do your expenditure. It is not like that. Money cannot purchase everything. So, it is not simply related to that I am well off and it hardly matters if my electricity bill comes this thousand or that much, but you are supposed to inculcate good habits among the children. They should also learn that well, how to reduce the use of electricity and that will be better for their future also. Then the attendance of social functions and parties. Of course, when we are arranging number of things, you might have noticed that when we are attending any function, the electricity and number of other things are there. Maybe you are rich enough to do that thing, but try to understand that your richness should not be detrimental for the society. And you might have noticed that in some of the areas, people they have decided that we will not do the expenditure on such occasion. Instead, we will collect the money, we will pool the money and we will help those who need that at the time of their daughter's marriage, at the time of the air, any emergency. So, they plan in that direction. If they can plan, we should also think that well, we can use this money for better social service, for better environmental protection. In that particular way, you can be an example that yes, if they are doing in that particular way, we should also. So, that message should also be spread in the society that there are alternatives to do particular thing in the society. Next is packaging by buying products in bulk. 
Of course, when you are purchasing particular thing, you are supposed to think that well, these are the items I am purchasing, whether it is going to affect in this particular way the society environment or in that particular society. So, at this level also you can help the environment at the same time help your family member also. Then demand for virgin wood products and anything that causes disproportionately large or toxic pollution. Of course, we should minimize in purchasing these things simply because these things are harmful and it may be not that much useful for us. So, you should think in that direction also. These were the different items related to reduce means we are supposed to do the minimum use of that particular thing in that particular way you can reduce the demand of these things. Let us move to discuss reuse of the particular goods. Reuse the goods by using second hand goods which are still functional. Of course, there are certain number of things you may think that okay, new mobile is there in the market, I should purchase, but think that maybe new mobile is there, but what is problem with your old one? If your old mobile, old laptop, old any products, old vehicle is already there, even if you will purchase the new one, what will happen to first one? So, if it is not necessary, if you think that no, I am in dire need of purchasing this particular thing, you should not you should wait for okay this mobile can be functional for remaining 6 months remaining 1 year you should go ahead you can use any product if you think that these products are there and i can continue using these products for more 6 months 1 year 2 years go ahead with that in that way you are not only saving your money you are not only protecting the environment but you are training your children you are training your uh, subordinate in the office, you are training your other friends that yes, we can use, reuse the products if it is possible. So, that you participate you can do that. Donation used clothes, stationery etcetera to the needy. Of course, you might have felt that certain things are there which you think that well it is of no use for me, but there are number of hundreds or thousands of people in the society they are in the urgent need of these things, let them use. So, you might have heard there are different occasions where old clothes or even the new clothes are donating during the winter season. There are people who are in dire need of such things, those who need they should get that. So, if you think that it these things are not of use for you, you should try your best instead of destroying instead of disposing of in a different way you should dif you know, distribute among those who need such clothes. Reusing water for gardening as today in number of households or family members they are using the for example, the RO water those wa wastage water can be re reused in different forms at the same time if you are having another system of wastage water you should try your best to manage because as you all know that it is nature's gift, when it is nature's gift you should protect it as nature's gift. So, water should be used and reused in a proper way and that technique you should learn that traditional method you are supposed to learn. Reusing gift wrappers, of course, gift wrappers are of no use, gifts are of use. So, dear learners when wrappers are there you can rewrap, you can use those things in wrapping another gift or you can use that in different purposes. So, just try to understand these things are reusing does not mean that you are poor, you are not rich or I can do, I am having that much money, these things are not related to that. Just try to understand that how much you are sensitive, you are supposed to remain environment sensitive, so that when you are using all these things you are practicing these things in ac your action in your day to day life, it will give you satisfaction which can which is beyond any economy and other level. So, try to get that satisfaction. Then another solution is by recycling. Recycling can be done for converting kitchen into compost as organic fertilizers. Of course, when you misuse certain 
uh, vegetable products when certain vegetable products and fruit products are not to be used, these items can be in a proper way converted into a different type of fertilizer. So, if you are having any kitchen garden, if you are having anything that is there, you can reuse, you can recycle these things in that particular way. Then using sewage for fuel, biogas, of course, it can be done and if you will do that, it is going to help not only you, but for the society and environment also. Using cloth waste as raw materials in industries, of course, industries are using and you should promote that, you are having number of that clothes which you can donate, which you can give, which you can supply and that is going to affect the society also. Then using molasses as raw materials in the spirits industry. Of course, there are certain things which can be done and it is going to affect the environment and sanitation aspects. Then converting used glass, paper, etcetera into new products. You might have heard during your school days or college days that students they are preparing best out of waste material. When they are preparing best out of uh, uh, material, so waste material can be used in a best possible way. That is the purpose of best out of waste. So, these things you should learn from children or the kids also that when they can do that in their school and college projects, we can do in our life also. And if you are uh, keeping that pen stand in your office, if you are keeping another items in your office, others will also get lesson that yes, we can do that. So, when you can, the children or others, they can do project on that in our day to day life, we can also do that. We can use that yes, this best out of waste is possible for others also. In that particular context, it is said that when we use that paper or other things in molding or preparing or giving them different shapes, then it is going to help not only environment, but for my daily life also. Well, these are the things I have taken help from the V. Bessels and Sons Bhans books, Culture of Sanitation from Indus Valley Civilization to Sulav, written by V. V. Hans. Well, these are the different suggestions given by the scholars where if you go ahead with these solutions, you can not only protect the environment, maintain the decorum in the society, you can prepare good citizen for future and of course, these things are there through which you can say that yes, I am satisfied, I can satisfy by another generation also and in that particular way, the sustainability should also be kept in mind. When we talk about sanitation and environment, do remember, we all are aware, simple thing is that it is not like that we do not know the importance of these things. As you know that during COVID-19, we started using number of traditional things, traditional herbs, paying respect to number of trees. We should not wait for any another type of that bad disease. But if we keep on regularly using that, if we keep on practicing our traditional method, we can lead a healthy life. I am not saying that you are not aware. We all are aware because we all stay in the same society. So, we know that well these are the different culture, tradition, norms and patterns and in that particular way, if our forefathers were very close to nature, their behavioral pattern was accordingly the nature, their behavioral pattern was very much good in tune with that. But we are supposed to maintain that whenever it is possible. I am totally agree with you that every time it is not possible to maintain all these things, but as much as possible, you should carry your tradition, you should protect the environment so that you can contribute in the well-being of the society. Simple thing is that you are having the knowledge, but you should implement that knowledge, that implementation part is most important. Sometimes what happens, maybe we are aware, but we do not know that how to implement it or whether it should be implemented in a proper way or not. In that context, we are supposed to remain aware that yes, if it is part of our culture, if it is part of our tradition, it should remain continued because everyone is contributing in the society. 
and when it is related to our health and when we follow that well I should remain healthy. Who does not want to remain healthy? Everyone wants. So, if you want to remain healthy then remain healthy, protect your environment, develop ecological sanitation and follow the norms, patterns, culture prevalent in that society. So, how good it is that if we follow the tradition, if we maintain our close proximity with nature and if we maintain our health also. And sometimes we keep on thinking that well how good we are that we are closer to nature. You just think that those people who are staying in hilly areas, those people who are staying in forest areas, they are very closer to nature. Even if we are not staying, we are not staying very closer to that. Whatever we are having, whatever efforts we can make in develop the society, whatever efforts we can make that yes, we can contribute to the society. From that angle, we are supposed to think that well, it will be my contribution. And as we discussed that through socialization process, you can teach your next generation. If you are uh, working in any office, you can send message to your office staff that yes, these are this particular design or my pen stand or my this particular calendar is made of from recycled thing or I have prepared it by reusing or reframing it. This will give another lesson if you are working in any organization, you should promote that well the electricity should be saved in my office or I keep that particular thing in that particular way. So, your behavioral pattern it is not like that your behavioral pattern is limited to you only, but wherever you walk, you walk with your habits and uh, culture that is going to influence others as human being we are supposed to imitate others also. So, when we are imitating we imitate the good things, if you inculcate that habit it is not like that it is going to affect your life, your near and dear life, but of course it is going to affect the others also because sometimes we come across different news items through different channels or newspapers that in that area people they are adopting that good practice related to environment and sanitation. We are not supposed to wait for the people that okay, we should keep on listening that okay, they are go doing good things, they are doing good things, but let others also know about me that yes, I am doing good things. For that, I have to make efforts. If I will keep on doing good things, I will maintain the culture and tradition of my society, I will promote the local thing and for example, you might have noticed these days people are preferring tea in the kulhar simple it is not like that you are simply ignoring the plastic cup of cup, but simply you are promoting that local business also. So, these are simple thing if you inculcate all these things as part of your life, it means you will be come to know that yes, I am doing good thing for the society, for the environment, for the health and when you are thinking of that yes, in that particular way my health will be protected. I am protecting environment and it is you just give it is relation of giving and taking. You are supposed to protect the environment and in that way environment will protect you. When I say that environment protect you of course, your health will be good and when you will limit the use of vehicle, limit the use of electricity, limit the use of doing any bad thing which may pollute the air in that particular way you are supposed to help the environment and healthy environment is always good. Healthy environment is not only good for your future, good for your health, good for the society, but it is always there who gives lessons to other that in that area good things are there. So, I do hope that we should promote that ecological sanitation and we should invent such good things as our innovative practice whatever we can do if we are expert in the science, if we are expert in knowledge of the traditional thing, we should learn that okay, certain things were already there in our tradition, we should highlight, we should promote, we should sustain those good things which are already prevailing in our culture. So, maintaining prevailing and sustainability of all these good things are part and parcel of life and if we will start learning that yes, I am doing all these good things 
not only for the society, but for my future also, then perhaps we can say that yes, we can giving or I am contributing my 100 percent to the society, keeping in mind the sanitation and society. In this particular way, if we will focus on that, then we may be saying that yes, I am doing the good thing. In that way, if we keep on thinking that yes, what is environmental sanitation, how sanitation, how is sanitation related to environment and how environmental sanitation can be useful for individual's health. If we keep on thinking every time on these issues, then we can be helpful for every others and this will be the purpose of discussing this course on sociology of sanitation and especially when we discuss that well this lecture is devoted to environment and sanitation. We can understand that with these particular things we can say that yes, will by learning these things that okay, environment my life is so much associated to environment. It is a matter of feeling that sometimes we ignore, we are ignorant of or we do not know that okay, my this lifestyle is going to affect the environment or my lifestyle is so much associated to even the environment, even the ecology, then we may start behaving in that particular way. So, I do hope dear learners that my discussion will be fruitful if you start practicing all these things which were part of our discussion. Let me move to the suggested readings which I have taken help for preparing this lecture and you it may be useful for you. Book on sociology of sanitation written by Muhammad Akram, another book culture on of sanitation from Indus Valley civilization to Shulav written by H. B. Hans. Then B. K. Nagalaj sociology of sanitation, B. K. Nagalaj problems of sanitation in India does culture matter, Madhu Nagalaj book gender and health, Richard Pais book sociology of sanitation, J. E. Park and K. Park's book prevention and social medicine, Bindeswar Pathak's book sociology of sanitation, environmental sanitation, public health and social deprivation. Asis Saxena's book Sociology of Sanitation. Well, dear learners, this is all about today's lecture on environment and sanitation. Our next lecture, seventh lecture will be dedicated to public health and sanitation. In that, we will discuss something about that how is sanitation related to public health. Thanks a lot for your presence hearing. Thank you. Hello, I am Shikha Dikshit, I teach psychology and I am with the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences at IIT Kanpur. Uh, today I am going to talk about what is health psychology. In the recent past, health psychology has emerged as one of the important areas in psychology. It is a field of study where psychological theories and concepts are applied to understand issues regarding health and illness. The two major themes which health psychologists are interested in studying are the themes of illness experience and behaviors associated with that experience. Uh, contemporary health psychology adopts various uh, and diverse kind of perspectives to understand health and illness issues. These perspectives include the behavioral perspective, the societal perspective and the cultural perspective. If we uh, try to enumerate the kind of topics that health psychologists study, <coughs> the range is very wide. To name a few of the topics, health psychologists study 
uh, cognitions related to illness that is health and illness related cognitions, social cognitive aspects of health and illness, cognitive adaptation, uh, chronic illness and uh, adaptation to chronic illness, disability, stress and management of stress. Uh, cog uh, health psychologists also study topics such as health related quality of life, social support and various kinds of coping mechanisms that people adopt to deal with illness, illness experience. 